Ever since the launch of the Modern Hitman series in 2016, if you asked someone why the games were popular, they would probably tell you it's because you can explore beautiful locations, find clever ways to kill your target, and make a daring escape. However, an often overlooked detail that truly completes these games is the characters that make up these worlds. In many games, NPCs, also known as non-playable characters, exclusively exist to just fill dead space or provide quests for the players to complete. As a result, many players believe Hitman NPCs are no different, but if you dig a bit deeper, you will find some of the most complex, intriguing, and enjoyable NPC behavior that gaming has to offer. Come with me as we unravel the mystery of Hitman NPCs and discover what makes them so special. To start our journey, let's go to one of the most famous Hitman levels of all time. Sapienza, Italy. Upon entering the level, the player is immediately greeted with a busy street, a bustling cafe full of people chatting over their morning coffee, and suspicious men guarding a large mansion. The sheer scope and attention to detail can seem overwhelming at first. How is it possible for so much to be happening simultaneously? But what the game hides from the player by using these intricate designs is that, in reality, these crowds of characters can be divided into three distinct categories. The guard, the innocent, and the ghost. In order to uncover the secrets these characters hide, it would be simplest in this situation to work backwards, and start with the first, and also the simplest secret to these huge crowds and massive events, the ghost. To put it simply, the vast majority of characters in the Hitman games do not actually exist. They are effectively the same as the bushes found in various locations that allow the player to hide, the only difference being that they can get frightened and run away if you were to do something illegal. These are often the people walking in a crowded street or milling about at a party. However, no matter what they see you do, they will never alert a guard never tell anyone what they saw, and the player will never be punished for committing a crime in front of a ghost. They will often vanish and reappear, unnoticed, in the environment they aimlessly wander. Since not every map contains ghosts, including Sapienza, let's look at this party in Dubai to see how ghosts alter the gameplay. Suddenly, when the ghosts are stripped away from this scene and all that remains are real characters, things start making much more sense. Now instead of hundreds of people, only dozens can be seen milling about, and tracking an individual becomes much easier. Mystery solved then, right? Well, not quite. Sure, the ghosts explain how the games can have these huge crowds without too heavy a burden on one's computer, but in a sense they create a new question. If not by having hundreds of people, how then does the game manage to convey the sense that every aspect of a level is alive? For that answer, we need to turn to the Innocents. These characters are what truly breathe life into the world of Hitman. Innocents can be found tending to gardens, praying at a church, running a bakery, among a variety of other tasks. Around 150 Innocents populate Sapienza in total, and it's hard to go a few feet without noticing another bystander simply living their life, unaware of what is unfolding around them. And this is where the first level of detail shines the brightest, and exemplifies the second secret to these NPCs, their movements. Every innocent has a fully unique path that they follow throughout every level. Some of these paths can range from extremely short, such as this woman who spends her life looking through a shop window, staring at a car, and smoking, or extremely long and detailed, such as the target, or even this woman who just walks back and forth around the entire map. Depending on the innocent, they will loop throughout the entire level or change based on what the player does. Many of you may be thinking, that's it? We well, yes, and no at the same time. While the average NPC is shockingly simple, where they truly shine is when you introduce the player into the mix. When the player is near NPCs, suddenly they will begin to speak, sometimes mentioning something happening somewhere in the level, sometimes talking about just the daily gossip, and sometimes they mention something that can be used to eliminate a target. This adds a huge level of immersion to the game, and gives these random characters a distinct purpose. On top of this, innocents act as a sort of a first layer of defense for the target. Unlike the ghost, the player is punished for being spotted committing a crime in front of an innocent. While they will never do anything to stop the player's actions even if their own lives are at risk, they will run away and inform a guard of what they saw. They will also notice illegal items left out and about and get a guard to collect them as fast as possible. But of course, I can't mention how innocents interact with the player without mentioning what happens if the player chooses to harm an innocent. When knocked out or killed, a significant number of innocents 
essence will provide an outfit that the player can then change into, and this allows the player to assimilate into the life of the innocent they stole it from, thus opening up a huge variety of opportunity to explore more areas, and more importantly, provides vital access to the target. The player is no longer just a hitman. As the gardener, they can access the outside of the mansion. As the churchgoer, they can overhear confessions to gain vital info. And as the baker, they can poison foods undetected. Along with this, people that knew the innocent the player disguised themselves as will recognize the change and grow suspicious. By having these unique innocents on every single map, the game reveals its third secret to these NPCs, their variety. On every single map, the player can find dozens of fully unique occupations they can watch or become. In Mendoza, a tour guide. In Dartmoor, a detective. In Hokkaido, an elite surgeon. By having unique innocence on every single map, every mission offers a plethora of entirely unique storylines to follow, providing hours of entertainment from a level that may have only taken 15 minutes to complete on the first attempt. But of course, all these options to kill the target would be completely uninteresting and unnecessary if it weren't for the final category of NPC, the one that the average player is likely more acquainted with the guard. Guards can be found throughout every Hitman location, often coming in a few different varieties. They can be mansion security guards, police roaming the streets, or secret agents watching from a distance. These characters are constantly on the lookout, and will respond with extreme aggression if the player is caught doing anything slightly illegal. This is why I don't consider the guards to be innocent, per se. I would argue that they're a little too aggressive, to the point where picking up a wet floor sign causes them to slaughter the player without so much as a second thought. But other than their occasional trigger-happy behavior, the guards do an excellent job of preventing the player from sneaking into locations too easily, and on harder difficulties, they also prevent less patient players from mindlessly killing everyone in sight until they reach their target. But how exactly do they go about this? It can seem confusing at first when a new player kills someone only to get swarmed by guards from across the map who shouldn't have seen a thing. Well, the most noteworthy thing about the guards is their response to conflict. When a guard sees another NPC panic or hears something illegal happening, they themselves will panic. As the player continues committing more and more crimes, more and more innocents will run away from the danger, thus alerting the guards they pass, causing them to run towards the player in an attempt to neutralize the threat. This loop can make it very difficult at times to escape once caught. The guards also have some more subtle mechanics that allow them to traverse large parts of the map. If they get shot at three or more times, they'll immediately sprint towards where the shots came from, ignoring everyone around them, even the player, in order to reach their destination. The seemingly small amount of guards can quickly become overwhelming, as these game mechanics can compound and turn an empty area of the map into a battlefield with dozens of guards all swarming the players simultaneously. So that is, in a nutshell, what the guards do to create a challenge in the Hitman games. But that only scratches the surface of their full purpose. Like the innocents, the guards are both a challenge and an advantage. The player can steal the outfit of the guards in order to take on their role and have much freer access throughout the level, as less people will typically be suspicious of guards. This offers a high-risk, high-reward situation. Does the player want to try to take out a guard for their outfit at the risk of getting into a gunfight? Or do they want to make do with easier to acquire clothing? The rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper, as new players will soon discover that the various cameras that exist in levels do not simply alert guards no matter what, but in fact are operated at a camera room. Without any guards in the camera room, players can be seen as much as they like on camera without being attacked or alerting a guard. This pattern of unseen details keeps compounding, and on top of the guards having fully customized pathing, there are also unique guards that can be found on some maps to add extra extra flavor to a mission. On Dubai, the player can become a personal bodyguard. In Marrakesh, an elite soldier who can send other guards home, and this list continues. These features are all incredible, and when working properly, create an immersive stealth experience unlike any other in gaming. When they are working which it would be remiss of me to pretend they always do. Like many games, these games are filled with various strange moments where characters don't quite behave the way they should. Sometimes the player gets spotted through a wall or through a bin they're supposedly hidden in. This can extend to characters sometimes darting around areas. While I personally feel that these glitches, at least in current day renditions of the game that have been updated, are not game-breaking, and can in fact increase the enjoyment of the game by helping lean towards the comical aspects of it, but some will 
certainly disagree. Despite the flaws, though, these characters have been meticulously crafted to create a world that feels alive to explore, and creates a unique stealth game series that has stood the test of time and hopefully will continue to in the future. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.